Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna to take a look at something that, you know, we pulled out of the racks because we we're moving a couple things around in the data center, and that is a 32 port, 100 gigabit ethernet switch, and specifically the Edgecore AS7712 32X. The Edgecore AS7712 32X is a pretty popular switch. You can find them in a lot of places. One example is you can find it on bmswitch.com. There, the pricing for the switch is about $11,000. Now, of course, if you're buying more of them, if you're going through resellers, other resellers, you can sometimes find discounts on this. So we put that $11,000 more as like a list price, but you know, it kind of gives you an idea of how much these things cost. Now, this is again, a 32 port QSFP 28 switch, which means you can do 3,200 gig ports. It can break out and do 128 25 gigabit ethernet ports. And we kind of wanted to take a look at what's inside. Hey, if you don't care about bare metal switches, you don't care about 100 gig ethernet switches, stop watching this video. We previously took apart an Intel OmniPath switch, which was pretty cool and very high end. It's a 100 gigabit per second, 48 port switch, but you know, based on OmniPath rather than ethernet. So we wanted to take a look at a, you know, kind of higher end ethernet switch. So that's what we're doing today. In this video, we're gonna take a look inside the switch. Now this is an extremely popular switch. It has broad network operating system support. So you can use it with pretty much every distribution you might wanna test of network operating system. This is kind of like the gold standard in the bare metal switch industry, you know, at least for its generation, right? And this features 3200 gigabit ethernet ports and you can break those out into 25 gigabit ethernet ports. So you actually have a lot of deployment flexibility flexibility with the switch, which is another reason it's popular. Edgecore may not be an overly well-known brand if you've always used Cisco hardware, right? I mean, the company is a subsidiary of a company called Acton, which is one of the big networking ODMs. So when you read reports about hyperscaler companies like AWS and Facebook, leaving their Cisco gear and instead going to Merchant Silicon, and you know, that is the exact market that Acton has excelled on, and Edgecore is really kind of building on that. An example of that is really if you look at the Edgecore and Facebook mini pack, which is Facebook's switch that they're using for 100 gig and 400 gig networking. That's a good example of, you know, these guys are not necessarily small players, even if you haven't heard of them, they're actually playing in the hyperscale market. So they are pushing huge volumes of switches. Okay, let's get to our hardware overview. Looking at the front of the switch, we can see the 32 QSFP 2800 gig ethernet ports. Now where we use QSFP plus for the 40 gig ethernet generation, we now use QSFP 28 for our 100 gigabit ethernet switching. Those 30 32 ports completely dominate the front of the switch. Also on the front of the switch though, there are three more important features. First, there's a console port, which, you know, that's something that most switches have. The second one is the out-of-band management port. And the third one is the USB port. Now that out-of-band management port you're gonna use, especially if you need to go and change the operation of your switches and monitor your switches, that out-of-band management port is just what everybody uses. It's very analogous actually in the server world to, you know, you have a BMC or an out-of-band management port on those. That's This is kind of the switch version of that. The USB port is also important on a bare metal switch because sometimes you use a USB port to be able to put in a USB key and load an operating system on there. So that is actually on a bare metal switch, a fairly useful little feature that people use a lot more, I think on bare metal switches than they do on kind of traditional switches. Move to the back of the switch, we can actually see a fairly simple, but something that's designed to be very easily serviceable rear of a switch. And there are six numbered hot swap fans on the back of that switch. And they're actually there so that they can run in five plus one redundant operation operation. So even if a fan fails, the switch can still operate while that fan is in the process of being replaced. Even if it takes a little while, you know, at least you have, have extra fans there for redundancy. You can also see on the back of the switch to power supplies. These are also hot swap units. They're actually 80 plus platinum rated units. So they're pretty high efficiency units, especially for a switch. Now that we've kind of looked around the switch, let's get inside. One item we wanted to know is just how many fairly large ICs there are in a switch like this. I mean, this is not a simple product by any means. We're gonna talk about them a little bit next, but we just want to point out that there are chips here from like Intel x86 and there's Altera CPLDs and FPGAs from that side of Intel. There's also, you know, the big Broadcom switch chip. And you can even see that there's, you know, the Smart Fusion chip, which has an uh, ARM Cortex M3 and FPGA logic in it. So, I mean, this is, there's a lot going on in this switch. The main switch chip here is a Broadcom Tomahawk BCM 56960, I think, which is a 3.2 terabit per second switch chip 
chips that does, you know, 6.4 terabits in full duplex. And so if you think about it, 3200 gig ethernet ports, 32 times 100 is 3200 or 3.2 terabits per second. That's the math behind that. Now, there are definitely newer generations of chips, but Broadcom Tomahawk was perhaps, you know, really the first widely adopted 100 gig ethernet switch chip for the merchant silicon market. So this is a very important switch chip just from an overall market standpoint. And it's kind of why we see this popular switch chip in this popular edge core switch. Today, a lot of the focus is on the 12.8 terabit per second and looking forward to higher speed network switch chips. So this is not necessarily the fastest switch chip out there, but it is something that, you know, for the 100 gig generation is very important. Something that we just really quickly wanted to point out on this PCB is there is the Broadcom switch chip, but there's a lot more going on. And for example, you'll see that there are three low power Altera, so that's now Intel, Max 5 CPLDs. And, you know, there's a total of three of them on the actual switch PCB plus another one of these on the fan PCB, which kind of helps the fan control. So there's a total of four of these chips in the switch. And that is not the only Intel Altera product here. The switch also has a Cyclone 4 FPGA next to the primary switch chip. So there's a lot going on. While the Broadcom switch chip is really important, and that's what we a lot of times talk about in terms of merchant silicon, there's another aspect to the switch. That is the Intel Atom C2538 chip, which is on board serving as management for the switch. Now this is a lower power quad core SOC that's part of Intel's Rangely line. It runs at 2.4 gigahertz, has a 15 watt TDP. And you're gonna notice that it has a relatively small heatsink on it compared to what we usually see in servers. And Edgecore can get away with this since the switch is just moving so much air that that heatsink is perfectly fine for such a low power part. Something that we did wanna point out in this switch is that these are Intel Atom C2000 series products. And so one needs to be aware of the Atom C2000 series or the AVR54 bug. In 2016, about three years after the C2000 series was launched, Cisco identified an issue where the Intel Atom C2000 series had a chance to cease working after years in operation. What this failure looked like would be often you would have a box powered down and it just wouldn't reboot. It wouldn't, wouldn't power back up. Now in 2017, there was a board level workaround and also Intel respun the C2000 series to use a new stepping, so that's a C0 stepping. But the problem with this bug is the fact that in this switch, in firewalls, I mean, the Intel Atom series is everywhere as an embedded server, embedded device controller. And so, you know, sometimes these things are not easy to replace. At STH, we even fell victim to this because we had one of our firewalls die because the power was shut off and then the device never came back online. If you're buying a new switch, this isn't an issue. But if you're, you know, thinking about redeploying a switch, you have a switch that's already deployed. You know, even if you're kind of looking at looking at a secondhand switch or something like that, you do want to make sure that you have the newer version or you have the workaround applied. Now, since the Intel Atom C2000 series was launched in 2013, it still utilized DDR3 memory, not newer DDR4 memory that most of the current chips all use. Inside the switch, we can see two eight gigabyte SO DIMMs for a total of 16 gigabytes of memory on board. One of the primary functions of an edge core switch like this is to be able to load many different types of operating systems and so what you see is a 64 gigabyte MSATA SSD. At this point, if you're just kind of taking stock, what we have is we have a one gig network that goes out to our out-of-band management port. We have a Intel Atom SOC. We have 16 gigabytes of memory and a 64 gigabyte SSD. This looks a lot like a little embedded server inside the switch. And that's basically what this is. We also just want to point out real quick that there's a Smart Fusion chip, which has FPGA logic, as well as an ARM Cortex-M3 processor on there doing some of the IOs. So going back to our Original diagram, you can really see just how many good size logic ICs there are in the switch and just how it's been designed for a lot of flexibility. One way to think about these switches is really as kind of low power servers that are controlling really high speed networking subsystems because you actually kind of have separate subsystems that are in the, in the switch and that's really important to make the whole open networking world work. You can also see that the switch has airflow guides to keep power supply airflow and main switch airflow separate. Airflow is specifically directed around the Broadcom Tomahawk switch chip and the QSFP28 ports to ensure that these kind of higher power components get enough cooling. You can also see internally that, you know, there's hot swap fans that are at the back and they have their own PCB to monitor fan operation, ensure that failures are diagnosed and replacement 
is relatively easy. If you're wondering, hey, the switch can actually run well over 60 decibels, like many servers, and so it's really a data center switch. At this point, you probably noticed that there's a fan PCB, a switching PCB, and a management controller PCB with the Atom SoC. Now, Edge Core actually sells a version of the switch with a different CPU subsystem. Specifically, the Edge Core AS7716 32X has a Xeon D1518 chip on it, and building a switch kind of in this modular fashion, Edge Core actually gets a lot of manufacturing efficiencies because you know they can do things like swapping out the CPUs without having to redesign the entire switch. And just really quick, since this is a bare metal switch, we wanted to just talk a little bit about software and why this particular Edge Core AS 7712-32X is really important. The Edge Core AS 7712-32X comes pre-installed with open network install environment, so you can load your network OS of choice onto the switch. We're just going to flash up from Edge Core what the compatibility looks like. And frankly, this is actually a really good list. There are a lot of open or bare metal switches out there that only work with one or two different distributions. So this is actually really nice. In our next lab build out, we're probably going to be using this switch with Sonic. However, we've been kind of tossing around ONL. We just want to mention real quick here, though, that, you know, while in some ways we'd actually prefer to have the higher performing Xeon D 1518 chip that's in the AS7716, what you're going to notice is that the AS7712, which we have actually has way better operating system support than the Xeon D version. This is something that, you know, especially if you're just getting started into bare metal networking and open networking, you're going to want to look at. This list, especially with the Edge Core AS7712, is really robust. And that's one of the reasons that this switch is so popular in the bare metal community, because it just works with so many different options. Hopefully that was a good overview, just to kind of get you some sense of what's going on in this switch. Hey guys, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy it, why don't you check out the STH main site, subscribe to us on YouTube, hit that notification button so you can see whenever we upload a new video. You can also check out some of the stuff that we've already uploaded on YouTube because we already have a lot of great content and we're uploading more every single week. Thanks again for watching and have an awesome day.